This truly is something special. What are we in for tonight? We are fishing this little spring creek that we have right behind our camp. But yeah, there are lots of ambushing fish around. What are we looking to catch? Brown trout. Big browns? Hopefully. What fun, what fun is this small creek fishing for big browns? Look at this, and, and no water. He's in, he's in. Andy, put her there. <laughs> nice. What an absolute thrill this is. Creeks this wide Lots and fish these. this big. <laughs> Mud with your brown trout? Good job. <laughs> Thanks, man. Wow, how do you like that? What a ride up the Rio Blanco. How oh amazing is that? Yeah, it's spectacular. And we passed so much fishy looking water. I, could, I couldn't stand it. I can tell. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the good thing about it is an hour trip up to the falls here. Now we have all day to pick all, all that day. glorious water apart yeah. and uh, we're on the hunt for big browns. I can't wait. All right, okay, well, let's go. I'm gonna fish with Andy, you're gonna fish with Hayden. Okay. And uh, good luck. All right, you too, sounds good. <laughs> that was awesome. No, it was the presentation. It was great. <laughs> you know, we knew this fish was there. We had caught the smaller one of the pair. We motored back up, put on a bigger fly, and the fish came for it once, and it just kind of hung out in the middle of, of the current, and I threw it back to him, and he came at it again and finally ate it. Nice. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. <sighs> On a mouse, how cool is that? The mouse eater. But that shows you, right? They're related 100% to structure, right? Yeah. Oh, the places fly fishing takes you. This is absolutely incredible. Welcome to the river of dreams. Coming up on this episode of The New Fly Fisher, I'm joined by Tom Rosenbauer as we're deep into Chilean Patagonia on the hunt for brown trout. This big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. Absolutely fantastic. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Magic Waters Patagonia, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, I bet Andy and Condors take this for granted. I bet as fledglings leaving the nest for the first time, these giant birds get to experience this and literally don't think twice about it. It's hard to fathom the vastness of the Andes mountain range, the breathtaking views, the vibrant vistas, the span of the landscape both on the horizontal plane as well as the vertical. Andean condors, if they don't realize how incredible their habitat looks, they should. Because though you can't anthropomorphize Chile's largest bird, 
you can imagine a lifetime of experiencing this. The Andes Mountains in all their majesty, in all their greatness, and all they offer this incredible continent. Witnessing the Andes mountain range from a bird's eye view will leave many a changed human. What looks insignificant to the eye proves raging and enormous. The Andes are cut and divided by one of nature's most determined substances, water. And here, in Chilean Patagonia, there is water in spades, from enormous lakes and raging rivers to small ponds and spring creeks. Brown trout and rainbow trout live here, and I'm here to tell you, they are incredible. Welcome to the River of Dreams in Chilean Patagonia. The River of Dreams is a remote spike camp of Parent Lodge Magic Waters Patagonia. It's found on the remote banks of the Rio Blanco. The camp is perfectly situated between two barriers of transportation. First, a giant rock that spans the river making it impassable from downstream, and more than 30 miles upstream, a set of unnavigable rapids. River of Dreams Base Camp is as private and secluded as you can get. It's very remote. So remote, the camp is accessed by one of two methods, horseback or helicopter. This trip, lodge owner Eduardo Barueto flew us to the lodge, and what a trip it was. The Andes Mountains are nothing short of awe-inspiring. Incredible topography sees you at the tree line and above. Traveling landscapes that sometimes has you feeling like you're being thrown off a sheer side of the cliff. Glacial lakes and runoff rivers pepper the mountains, slowly growing more green and lush as you come down from the peaks. The first glimpse of the River of Dreams, the Rio Blanco, has us all juiced. That marine blue-green color is incredible. The River of Dreams camp on the Rio Blanco is rustic luxury in the middle of nowhere, literally. There are three double occupancy tents built with structural integrity. They have elevated wooden floors, two comfortable beds with linens, and Chilean woolen blankets in each tent. The tents are heated if necessary and have electricity. The main lodge boasts a covered porch, spacious dining area, and comfortable seating area for all guests. With hot showers and flush toilets, even Wi-Fi if needed, the River of Dreams camp can be considered home home very far away from home. After getting settled, Tom and I had a couple hours of daylight left. We decided to divide up with me fishing with guide Andy Manstein and Tom fishing with Hayden Dale. This is Andy Manstein. He's a guide here at the River of Dreams. And Andy, this truly is something special. What are we in for tonight? We are fishing this little spring creek that we have right behind our camp. It's pretty tiny by now. The river level is low. But yeah, there are lots of ambushing fish around. What are we looking to catch? Brown trout. Big browns? Hopefully. Yeah. The biggest we can find. <laughs> but the average that we find here is like 18 to 20 inches. Oh, really? And we have, if we are lucky, the chance to get an even bigger one. All right. Well, we've got terrestrials tied up, and uh, the night is young. It doesn't get dark till, till around 10 o'clock, so let's have at Time it. Time to get some mouse fishing done. There we go, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
What fun, what fun is this small creek? Fishing for big browns in a tiny little creek. Oh! Look at this, and, and no water. He's in! <laughs> He's in! Andy. No place to hold him in the water much. Put there. <laughs> nice! What an absolute thrill this is. Creeks this wide, Lots and of fish weeks. this big. <laughs> It's very technical, isn't it? It is. Mud with your brown trout? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. You know what? It's a difficult game to play, but it's well worth it. It's a lot of fun. Um, small, tiny creeks and big brown trout. The next morning was to be our first full day on the River of Dreams. The plan is to gear up and make the trek upstream to the rapids, spending the day working our way back to camp. Best you rinse off your shoes before you go into the boat. The fly lines will be very yes. happy this. These hard frame pontoon boats navigate the white water and flows of the Rio Blanco perfectly. They feel as stable as can be. The drive up river is as stunning as the chopper ride in. With evident high water marks, you really get a feeling of the magnitude of the river and what it can be under the right circumstances. The water is a little high from runoff and recent rain, but it's clear enough and should fish very well. As you drive upstream, the river banks change dramatically until you reach the cliffs and the rapids at the top. What a view, what a ride. Wow, how do you like that? What a ride up the Rio Blanco. How oh amazing my God. is that? Yeah, it's spectacular. And we passed so much fishy looking water. I, could, I couldn't stand it. I can tell. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the good thing about it is an hour trip up to the falls here. Now we have all day to pick all, all that day. glorious water apart yeah. and uh, we're on the hunt for big browns. I can't wait. All okay, right, well, yeah, let's go. I'm gonna fish with Andy, you're gonna fish with Hayden. Okay. And uh, good luck. All right, you too, sounds good. And I've got a uh, 150 grain depth charge on here to get down and keep the streamer riding low in the lower in the water. Um, how long of a tippet should I have? I don't, you know, I don't have any. I don't have a full leader. Just have tippet on. How how long should? Whoa! Oh, that was a nice nice fish. fish. How long should that? Uh, I'd say about three to five feet. Three to five feet, okay. Yeah, so I got about three on, four to five. If we have any, if, you know, if the fish, if the fish, how do you know that the, the uh, tippet's too short if the fish turn away? Oh, yeah, there's another that, one. And uh, there's a little one. I wish we had gotten that one that I just hooked because that was uh, a rainbow right here. A rainbow, yeah. And you say there's only about 10% rainbows in here? Maybe even five. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're typically nice rainbow. Not the not the target, but they'll sit in these little back back eddies like this. Mm -hmm. Wish we had hooked that first yeah, fish. Yeah, that was a nice, of <laughs> nice brown. That was a decent fish. So as far as strip speed is concerned, uh, you know, how do you how do you gauge it? Do you use the same speed all the time? Or do you, uh, 
Do you vary it? Do you, do you make it erratic, fast, slow? What's the speed on, you on like? On this river, I would say that kind of a medium fast dollar bill size strip. Uh-huh. Dollar I, bill size, that's a good. What I tend to go towards the most. Okay. Um, oh, there's a bump. Dollar bill size strips. Dollar bill size. Okay. You know, and you'll have fish follow it sometimes all the way to the rod tip here. Yeah. Um, when they do that, and you got them so close to the boat, I'll get people just to kind of sweep that rod across the front of the boat. Uh huh. Just with the line that they have out. And that little speed increase right there will trigger a response. Big rainbow. Bigger, a little bit bigger. Whoop. Hey, buddy, easy. Now, how about those uh, more, like, would they be back in there? It's oh, yeah. It's in this type of spot, you know, I, I like to get it basically as far as I can in. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll tell people that, you know, if we're not hooking trees, we're not casting in there far enough. Okay. And it's, the fish are in the structure. They're, they're up against the bank. But in this type of water, they will kind of cruise around as well. So, you okay. know, just getting the most out of the cast, really. Just as far as you can back, working it across that really slow water. And they love, you know, front sides of logs, back sides of logs. You know, mm -hmm. you, just anywhere where they can really sit and kind of remain stealthy for something to come by that they can hit. Oh, quick release. Oh, that was a nice brown. Yeah, it was. Where he's come back, where he's supposed to be. No. Yeah, there he is. Oh, leave it, leave two it, leave of it. them. Leave it, leave it. Oh, I had him. <laughs> Damn. That was a nice fish. Yeah, it was. So Hayden, thank you. That was probably the best morning of streamer fishing I've ever had. And I really appreciate all your guidance and help. And of course, Scott, it was exciting. Yeah, it was really, a lot of fun. It was really great, so thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. So we're about to have lunch. We still have hours and hours left to fish, and I'm gonna eat fast. It is just after lunch. It's been a fantastic morning. We got one really, really nice big brown this morning. Lost one that was even bigger. <laughs> the big one goes go all the way away. <laughs> of course. What's the plan for this afternoon? Well, we go on cruising down the river and changing structure. Gonna find fish hopefully on the streamer and hopefully on the mouse. On a mouse? Would be nice. There are a few shallow places coming with lots of structure. Okay. Good places to fish Perfect. the mouse over. Well, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon, we can fish till 10. It doesn't get dark here early, so let's hit the river let's and see, see what we can how do. arms do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just looks like a super fishy spot, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. There has to be one. Lots and lots of structure. Lots of depth change, lots the of oxygen. The only section in this part. Yep, yep, good fish. Fished all morning with a black and blue streamer. And uh, we switched over to a, a tan uh, cone head. And uh, all right, good fish for after lunch. These brown trout really are fantastic. Flies out already. And they're super aggressive. Just great. Now accuracy is the key on this. Let me get this guy back. And I'll talk a little bit about accuracy and then... Thank you, buddy. Accuracy when fishing brown trout is key because they live in wood. They live in structure, whether it's a hole, a rock, a log, a log jam, what have you. 
in order to be able to place that fly effectively where those fish live is key because they will hit it often within a second or two of it hitting the water. Now, there's one problem with fishing this way is that it's high risk, but with high risk, you get high rewards. So you do get hung up a lot, bring a lot of flies um, because you got to put it where they live. If you don't put it where they live, they're never going to eat it unless you get lucky and one chases it down. All right, so here's the fly we're using. It's a, it's a new one because the one that caught that fish was destroyed. Um, it's a rabbit furred zuddler, basically. Um, Mother minnow got a cone head, got a, uh, a, a collar on it with a little bit of, of um, crystal flash, some legs, a little red red in the throat. Rubber legs are very important. Yeah, so this is, this is uh, the lodge owner's favorite fly and we're putting it to use, uh, Eduardo. It's working great kind of crevice structure seems to be a little more productive than the really shallow ones that go in like gradually like over there. So yeah. That's good. So we came down this channel in the main part of the river and I threw this fly and just as the fly hit, oh no. it's uh, this big fish came and rolled, rolled on it. So he came up the other side of the channel and placed it approximately where it was, and he came back for it. Instantly. <laughs> Don't you love that? I love it. Now that's a quality brown trout. That's fun. You find one, you poke it, or you, you move it, you come back around, place a cast, and away you go. Lots of flies on the water all of a sudden. Mm. Oh, nice. Good job. Good fish. Good fish. That wasn't the fish that swiped at it. That was no, the second one. I said, oh. So we're talking about attitudes of fish. And, and uh, you know, browns, in my opinion, and I think the opinion of many, are pretty badass. You want to tell me what you think about it? Yeah, that ass. They're aggressive fish that love to chase. Look, that guy's that guy's look like it's just spawned out. Look how thin he is, huh? huh. Uh, they're they're aggressive fish that like to chase. Now, to that, when you're fishing for them, you need to mimic their their desire to eat and to and to chase, chase right? So the faster you can strip your flies back, the better. You gotta make them, it's, it's like a dog chasing a rabbit or, or, you know, something along those lines. They need that trigger in order for them to come out from their cozy little home to make it worth the while to expend the energy for that protein. So fast strips, maybe quick strips, maybe long fast strips, whatever, whatever it is, you gotta keep it moving. So that's what we did here. We threw into this big pool, strip, 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 and one fish came, missed it, and another fish came and ate it. <laughs> Lodge owner Eduardo was keen to tell me about the unique opportunity the real Blanco can offer up. Daytime trout on mice patterns? I love fishing mice for trout and have only been able to do it for big brookies in Ontario and Labrador, Canada. So I was keen to tie on a mouse and see what the real Blanco, the river of dreams, would offer up. On a mouse, how cool is that? The mouse eater. But that shows you, right? They're related 100% to structure, right? Yeah. Put it as and close to the- And how opportunistic feeders they are. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Brown trout on a mouse. It's not a giant, 
but it's got a giant heart. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Likes to get bigger. And beautiful take. <laughs> Great take. Struck it a couple times too, right? Yeah. Pretty incredible that after launch, the streamer bite seems to have tailored, tailed right off. And now, like they're eating mice. Even better. Even better. So visual. And the trick is to, re is to really change up your retrieve from strips to arm wiggles. That's a good fish. That might be the best mouse fish of the day so far. Andy? Yeah, but it's the same size as the others. That's great. Anytime you can get them on the mouse, doesn't matter. And they do have teeth. Good fish, fun stuff. When you get into a remote fish camp, such as the River of Dreams, one of the many questions or concerns anglers wonder about is, well, other than the physical amenities of the place, how's the food? And how are the people making the camp run? Eduardo's team at the River of Dreams are literally part of the excellence of the experience here. Guides are world-class, the food is close to perfect, and the smiles on all staff, all the time, are infectious. Pisco Sours await your return from the river, coupled with great company and superb cuisine. The next morning, the weather turned. Rain and fog. But here, you fish it as you find it. There's no use sitting around. How does rain affect fly fishing? Well, like all things in fly fishing, it depends, right? There's so many variables. Uh, on the one hand, rain lowers the light levels, so fish tend to be a little less spooky, tend to come out and feed a little bit more. Rain will often stimulate certain insects to hatch. The lower light levels, insects will tend to hatch more, especially mayflies. Mayflies really like to, to hatch in the rain various species of mayflies. On the other hand, you know, there are places where rain kind of depresses things. Here in Chile, there aren't as many insects. The hatches aren't as prolific, and rain doesn't really do much. Doesn't, doesn't make it bad, doesn't make it good. It just is, and the fish will feed about the same in the rain. So it really depends. Now, if the water levels start to go up, start to rise, and the water gets a little dirty, that can really turn things on. It disorients things like minnows and crayfish, and also worms get washed into the water, worms that are along the bank get washed into the water. So streamer fishing, obviously, and nymph fishing with something like a worm fly can be really, really good as the water levels start to rise. Now there comes a point where the water gets so dirty that it makes fly fishing tough, but it's always worth trying a big dark streamer uh, when the water levels get up. So rain can can really help things, can really turn things on, or it cannot make a difference, or sometimes it can make the fishing worse. But the cool thing about fishing in the rain is that you won't have as much competition. Most anglers are fair weather anglers. So when you get out there, you're gonna find fewer people, less crowded conditions, you may even have the river to yourself. So the only way to really tell if how rain affects fly fishing is to go out and do it yourself. Shortly after we get set to head out, things start to clear up. Today, Tom is fishing with Andy and me, Hayden. where you have a fish on the far side of the log, and Andy is 
kindly rode us around the backside of this log. Hopefully the fish will be still on. I'm in a bush. Oh, look at, there's a fish. <laughs> look at the fish hanging there. <laughs> Easy to net. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, fish. That was very cooperative. Very you. patient. Barbless fly popped out. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Brown Trout. Well, that was fun. Nice landing. That was exciting. <laughs> yeah, today we, uh, we left the lodge right now. We are just below it, fishing the river downstream from there, all the way down as far as we can to our end of the river. Uh, I expect to find a little fewer fish than we had yesterday, but in average, they seem to be a little bigger in the lower stretch. It's more streamer fishing today. Doesn't really look mousy. Oh, that's a nice fish. Beautiful fish. Right in between those logs over here, just a narrow, soft, slow channel. Two logs, one on either side for protection from the current and from predators, and just uh, came out from another log and sucked in the streamer, big black streamer. So we have a br we have a bright day right now and black fly. Not supposed to happen, but it worked. So you never know. Try everything, and you never know what's gonna happen. You know, no matter how long you've been doing this, you're gonna have days when you feel like you just started last week. I have been stepping on my line, tangling my line in everything. I'm not smart enough to get my stuff out of the way. The wind is blowing me the wrong way. I'm, I'm pushing my arm out instead of dropping my elbow when I cast. I'm doing all sorts of stuff wrong today, but you know what? It's still fun. Oh yeah, nice fish. Oh, big fish. Oh, big fish. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, that fish was in the spot you might expect him, right up against the bank at the end of kind of the tail end of some slow water here, and he's really dogging it. He is going deep and in the current. There's not much you can do when they get downstream of you. You can try to lead them off to the side into the slower water. Once their head comes up, oh! Once and their head comes up, <laughs> once their head comes up, uh, you let them go. <laughs> no, what I was going to say is once their head comes up, you can usually get them quickly into the net. Once you get that head above water, you can almost skitter him. Even a big fish skitter him across the top of the water. Didn't happen there. Barbless hook, he shook his head, got off. It's gonna happen. Get over it. The afternoon is looking better as the day wears on. Hayden and I are on the hunt for streamer fish. Hayden, you and I have never fished before. How do you want me to fish today? So I want us to get real tight to the bank, pretty much any slow pocket uh, that's harboring these fish. They're, they're waiting to pounce, waiting to hop out of their structure and, and hear that dinner bell go off. And so we want to get kind of tight to the bank and uh, give it a medium to medium fast strip about dollar bill to a foot size strips and um, just hope that we can move some fish off this structure. And what about the set? The strip set, uh, that's, that's always the preferred method for me. Um, I, I do like some movement of the rod tip as well to kind of give that fly some added motion, especially towards the end, just to see if anything's following from down below. Um, but the strip set, you know, it keeps us in contact with that, with that fly and if they do do a short strike and decide to come back and eat it again, then we're, we're in that ready position still. So down here, these fish are willing to eat pretty much at any time of day, I feel. 
And it's just that, you know, they're very opportunistic. This river, especially the Blanco, doesn't, doesn't see the big hatches like a lot of the typical fisheries that will fish back in North America. Um, so these, these fish are willing to come out and, and eat a big ticket item. One following it, trying to eat it. You see that? Yeah, I'm watching it. Look at that ride. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that we, you know, are having better, better fishing during the early parts of the day or late parts of the day. It's just kind of right place, right time, putting the fly back in that zone. called it, man. Hayden, you said, you like that opening right now, put the fly right in there and this big guy came out. It's a good one, TV fish. Like it. So Hayden and I have been fishing together this morning and uh, we've had some great, great success. Um, caught a really nice fish uh, and moved a bunch of other ones. Um, and uh, now this guy's home to see us and to see what we can do. This fish charged downstream after the fly. <clears throat> Dark fish. Good one, good one to start the afternoon, huh? Happy with that? Oh yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me too. All right, let's get this guy back. That is him. I barely got the row. Yeah, well, you knew where he was. We pulled him out on our first round by, moved him, fished the run, came back up, first cast. Yay! Oh, good fish. <laughs> Don't you love it That's when a awesome. plan comes together? <laughs> that is fantastic. That is sick. He just first cast, right? <laughs> got one strip I, in, he just... I made one oar strip. And ate it. <laughs> so these fish, when, uh, when you move one and you don't sting them, or sometimes even if you do sting them, you know, it pays to either, if your guide's not turn around going back up, just ask them nicely, can you guys go up that, back up and try that again? And Hayden said, let's go up and try for that fish again, Mark, and boom. <laughs> so fun. There you go. Good fish. That makes it. Oh, it flies out too. Fantastic. Barbless fly is out. All right, I'm gonna get him a drink, take some pictures, and then we'll let her go. It's our final run on the River of Dreams, and we decide to head back upriver for our last shot at a giant. Tom is up. Tom is due. How do you pick a streamer fly? How do you pick what color streamer fly to use? Well, there's no solid rules other than the old rule of bright day or clear water, light fly, dark day or dirty water, dark fly, seems to work fairly well. We started out with a white fly this morning and it didn't work. We went to an olive fly with an orange head. That didn't work. Now we're going to try a black fly and see if that works. And you know, if you're in clear water and you can see the fish chasing the fly, they won't all take the fly. They won't all commit. Yesterday I was fishing a white fly and the fish were chasing, chasing, chasing the fly and not taking it. And I asked Marcelo, I said, Marcelo, should I bother changing fly patterns, size, color? He said, no, nah, not really. He said, the water's cold, the fish just aren't committing. So you just have to sometimes sort through and find that super aggressive fish that's gonna commit to your streamer. We're on a different river now. We're on the river of dreams with Magic Waters where we had to head to helicopter in and we're gonna horseback ride out. And there may be different colors that are favorites in this river. Hayden, what color do you like in the river of dreams? 
For sure, black's my, my favorite color. Okay. Um, always makes fish move. Mm -hmm. um, we do get a lot of overcast days here, mm -hmm. um, and black is a typical good color for overcast day. So do you um, believe in that dark day, dark fly? Dark day, dark fly. Yeah. Dirty water, dirty, or yeah. darker fly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and typically I'll go with a, a black or maybe a brown. Mm -hmm. um, Autumn Splendor is always a favorite here. Okay. Uh, just resembles a brown trout and that's what these fish are eating. They're eating, right. they're eating their own. And other rivers, how do you how do you pick color for streamers? I mean, what what do you do? You start with anything special? Yeah, you... I, I like to I like to start with a medium sized fly. Mm -hmm. um, and typically, you know, if if I know, like for instance, on the Simpson, another river we fish, I know that they have pancora, mm -hmm. so I'll fish something with a little yellow and brown in mm -hmm. it. Um, or I'll imitate some of the some of the bait fish that are, are around here in Chile, as well as some of the smaller uh, trout that they will consume. But uh, I, I like to mainly kind of start with black or yep. olive, yep. just, you know, go-tos. And mm -hmm. then from there, um, I'll, I'll, I'll you, switch it You up. switch it out yeah, if yeah. that isn't working. Yeah, but typically it does. You got a lot of yellow there. When do you use yellow, on a bright I, day? You know, a lot of yellow and brown, uh, yep. just to mimic those those brown trout. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'll use, uh, I'll use yellow on a bright day. I'll use white and tan on a bright day as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the olive and black, it's uh, it's hard to, hard to beat down here. Okay. They, they love it. And you find that in other trout streams around, I, I around do, the world? I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, definitely light, light color or, or a sunnier day, I'll tend to go towards a lighter color streamer. And a darker day, I'll go towards darker flies. Cool. How about Alaska? Same same thing? Yeah. Alaska is just a same thing. whole new ball game. But yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of flesh, you know, they love flesh all throughout the year. Um, but definitely towards the end of the season when when there's more salmon carcass, but uh, black and white and olive and white are always always standbys mm -hmm. up there for for pretty much any condition I found. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good advice and good philosophy. Pretty much agrees with what most people yeah, say. It's so. hard to, it's yeah, it's hard to it's hard to knock that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. So there's really there's really no rules. It's fun. Mix it up, experiment, try different sizes, try different colors. Start with that rule of bright day, clear water, light fly, dark day, dark water, dirty water, dark fly. But then mix it up from there. Have fun, experiment, and see what flies are gonna make the fish commit. Equipment used on this excellent River of Dreams brown and rainbow trout adventure is as follows. Tom and I were both fishing five and six weight fly rods with matching five and six weight floating lines for dry flies and terrestrials. Intermediate and full sinking lines were matched with rods to present streamers to these fish. Leader material, was 2X and 3X tapered 9 to 12 foot leaders with 5 to 6 foot leader material for sinking and intermediate lines presenting streamers. They really like the wall here. Nobody home. Oh. Oh, why'd the smaller one eat it? Look at the big one. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Look at that big Whoa. one. We're gonna go back to that guy. <laughs> That's a pretty fish right it's there. Still though. a pretty brown trout, yeah. yeah I gotta kinda ride down this little section and then. Well, that was fun. We had two nice brown trout chase the streamer. Unfortunately, the smaller one took it. The smaller one was maybe 16. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna motor back upstream, try a bigger fly for that big brown trout. See if we can get him to eat. My tip it to sinking tip line, perfect. I find perfection loop does not hold. I don't like perfection loop in smaller diameter tippets. I think it's fine for leader butts. Works great for leader butts, but I don't think it's any good. So uh, what I do is I bimini a piece to the fly line. Permanently. Yeah, I like that. That's a bimini. And then I put a tippet ring here, and then I can change tippets easily. So, yeah. And you get a little stretch, you know, you get a little stretch yeah, exactly. from the bimini. The bimini stretch is good. So, I find, that I find that system works really well. 
Because we did see another big fish in here. Yeah, there's a couple. This is likely water, though. Well, you know, we knew this fish was there. We had caught the smaller one of the pair. We motor back up, and we um, put on a bigger fly, and the fish came for it once, and it just kind of hung out in the middle of, of the current, and I threw it back to him, and he came at it again and finally ate it. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. Nice. Oh. So that was fun. We went back up and we got the big fish. It never works that way, but it did today. Got the big fish, brought him back down to the same place and released him. So pretty cool, Hayden. Thank Didn't you. much better. Thank yeah. you, man. That was fun. <laughs> A lot of fun. Well, that about does it for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. Thanks for watching. I want to thank everybody at the River of Dreams and Magic Waters Patagonia for their incredible hospitality and, of course, the excellent angling opportunities. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it, and what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? For more on our show, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. My name's Mark Melnick, and on behalf of Tom Rosenbauer and everyone at the show, thanks for watching. We hope one day we'll see you in the backcountry of Chilean Patagonia. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Magic Waters Patagonia, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. <laughs>